And now joining us from Washington, D.C. is Congresswoman Beth Van Dyne. Thanks for joining us this weekend. Sure, glad to be here. Let's just start with the latest uh, foreign aid package that passed out of the Senate uh, earlier this week. So $95 billion for uh, Ukraine funding, Taiwan funding, and Israel funding. What's your position on that bill? Well, one, I need to see, I think, more fully. I think we, what we'd like to see is those as three separate bills on, you know, as opposed to trying to tie it with our border, with our border security, seeing it as an Israel package, seeing it as a Ukraine package, and then seeing it as a Taiwan package. Um, but whichever one we do, we need to make sure that we are tying on the appropriate uh, uh, HR2 to, I would say that would be Ukraine. Um, and then we also have an opp opportunity with Ukraine to look at just defense spending as opposed to humanitarian aid, because I know that there are some questions right now on, uh, on, on whether or not that money is actually going where it needs to go. And I think if it's on, on military aid, it's a lot easier to, to keep track of. Am I hearing you correctly that so you would support a Ukraine aid bill if it was connected to HR2, that border security package? Well, it would depend, again, on whether or not it's strategic spend or whether or not it's going to potential, you know, corruption. You know, so how they pay the money, how much money it would be and where it would be directed, making sure it's strategic in the U.S. best interest, I think, is what I would be looking for. Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas has been impeached. Uh, yeah. Representative, does this rise to the level of, of high crimes and misdemeanors? What do you think will happen in the Senate? <laughs> and I would say I would say the fact that you have 110,000 people who have died as a result of fentanyl coming in over our southern border, the fact that you've got over 10 million people who have been allowed to in, enter our country illegally, and some people have even said, like for example, Chad Wolf, it's more like 11 million people in the last three years. You've got people who are here illegally that are are beating our police officers in the street, then flipping cameras off. You've got daily basis of of, of drug trafficking, sex crimes sex trafficking, um, ch child um, trafficking. At the same time, you've seen increases in, in murders, rapes that are being committed by people who shouldn't be here. I look at Mayorkas and these are, poli these are results of his policies that he has executed. As a direct result of memos that he has sent to Customs and Border uh, Patrol to ignore the law. I believe in just about two weeks, we have another a deadline that could lead to a government shutdown. Um, yeah. How confident are you that we will actually pass a budget as a country as opposed to a, a CR that just keeps kicking the can down the road? You guys are the uh, the budget writing house, after all. Well, if we had the house, we had the Senate, it would be great because we would be able to push. But unfortunately, you've got you know, a very narrow margin in both. And one is led by the house, by the Democrats. The other is led, you know, the house is led by the Republicans. So you know, we're, we're having a lot of horse trading going on right now. But you mentioned the tax bill, and that was a bill that we have been hearing from small businesses all across the country. Invest. They want to look at, at, at things like research and development, and they want to look at their expensing, their depreciation, and make us competitive with the rest of the world. So you know, for for uh, Texas, that means saving about eight million jobs and about over seven hundred million dollars in wages. And that was a paid for bill. So it was included uh, provisions for, for child tax credits, which added a work provision on there and it also added a security, a social security requirement to make sure that we're not giving those dollars away to people who should not be here legal. Tax cut, uh, the tax cut jobs act extension with our, 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 our tax package that we just passed that we just passed. Now looking at the budget, yeah, we're gonna have a hard time because we've got two hard deadlines that are coming up, March first and March eighth. And we have to either pass all of our appropriations and pass a budget, or like you had mentioned, pass a, a, a short term CR to give the appropriators more time to be able to negotiate this which I don't think anybody has a stomach for because it's continuing the same levels of spend that we saw under the, under the, the, the traumatic uh, uh, last two years uh, under Pelosi's rule where we had just skyrocketing inflation. But we also have um, an opportunity to pass a long-term omnibus, a one-year omnibus, which has an automatic cut of 1% to our budget. But again, it's only 1%. I think we want it more targeted than that. And so you said it was a hard look, time. So it doesn't sound like you're that confident that, that you'll get anything yes. besides a CR. Um, again, and, and, and that would just be extending it out. But I think uh, they had a very uh, contentious meeting here yesterday hmm. with a number of our members talking about the budget and talking about how we're going to pass it and what that means and what needs to be in it. 
And I think the House has a responsibility, it has an opportunity to pass a very strong budget bill. Uh, now the Senate, you know, can do what they will with it, but I would hope they would look at it and the merits. The fact that we've got over $34 trillion worth of debt now, the fact that within five years, uh, over half of every dollar that the U.S. makes is going to be spent on servicing our debt. It is not sustainable spend. And, you know, we had an opportunity last fall to be able to have uh, discretionary funds, to be able to have a border bill pass and have a short-term CR. That did not pass. Um, but we're going to be up against a wall March 1st. I know a number of us don't want to see the government shut down, but unless we do something about our border, I think this is a hill some of us are willing to die on. Congresswoman Beth Van Dyne, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you.